All right, look. What up, YouTube? Uh, it's your boy Taco Cat, and we're gonna take a look at Starfield Direct. Ten days, ten days away. We're gonna take a look into the deep dive. Ten days till Starfield. I cannot wait. So, let's get it, dude. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to Bethesda Game Studios. You know, we've been so lucky over the decades to make the kind of games that we love here. And that's thanks to all of you from the Elder Scrolls to Fallout. We love creating these worlds and playing in them just as much as you do. And throughout all that time, we'd often talk about and dream up the space game. What if we could take that feeling of being who you want to be and exploring a new world, but set it in space? where you weren't really limited in where you could go or what you could do, and that. Now, for me, Skyrim <clears throat> might be, oh, man, I don't know. To me, it could be the greatest game ever. I mean, obviously, you have your OGs, but, I mean, Skyrim, just from the detail... I mean, everything about it, I, I mean, to me, it's probably the best game ever that I've played. Um, it's definitely in my top five. Um, but, I mean, if this is Skyrim in space, then, I mean, what, dude, it's, it's going to be insane. So, all right, let's take a look. It's Starfield. Obviously, we've come a long way since then with the games we've built, our technology, and all of us here in the studio. We've done so much together, but, well, we've never tried to make a game like this. Today, you'll get to hear from many on the team and see so much of what we think makes our game special. So let's jump in and take a look. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda RPG through and through, where you step into a new world and you get that feeling of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds, because the choice of where to go, it's not ours. A thousand worlds. So what they're going to say is, is that only 10% of the worlds have life. Um, which, I mean, is... I would say... About right. Because if you look at our solar system, right? Earth's the only one that we know of with life. So, one, you know, 10%. So that's that seems to be about right. Obviously, right here you have the meter. Looks like radiation. You have O2, C2, uh, CO2... Planet name. You got a health bar here. Um, man, I don't know. So hold on. Let me change this camera angle. I don't like. I like it from the side better. Sorry, guys. Boys, ill prepared. There we go. Now we're doing it. Got that locked. Okay. Let's get up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's kick it out. All right, now we're good. All right, let's get it. It's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet to the mountains in the distance, to the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. So hold on. So they, they're saying... 
Let's go back. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes? Okay, so if they're saying that the planet is orbiting, right? So let's say I was right, my ship was right here. So you're telling me I can just hop up and just shoot straight across to that planet? Like, no, is there going to be like a cutscene? Is it going to, do I have to go like into space, cutscene, now I'm into space, then I go here? Or am I just going to be able to fly, let's say right from here, straight to this planet or the moon? I mean, that's, to me, that's, I mean, that's insane. Right? Right, guys? I mean... You can visit it, too. We realistically simulate the galaxy around you. Our next-generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all-new animation system. And of course, you can play it in third person, and you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. So it looks like temp minus 11 zero percent oxygen and 0.25 gravity hmm. i just got a cool weapon here 100 100 rounds huh you can collect resources do a mission and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected Ooh, abandoned mine Uh oh, uh oh. It's like a little P90. I'll, hold on, I'm gonna switch it up to 1440. But I love how the music changes when you get into a fight. Love that. It's one of my subtle things where when the the action kind of different differentiates and it's just you go from like attack to like exploring how the music and the kind of overall vibe of the game changes and as you can see obviously your circle's a little red you got bad guys here so now he's got look looks like he's got five grenades I just see him jump a little higher because of the gravity and he has to do back boom boom Credits. We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. And you can view all that stuff, right? in your data menu. This is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail in every object, from all of your weapons, to spacesuits, to food. We just obsess over the details and food. We obsess over food. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's nice. head out. Welcome back, Taco Cat. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and relatable. For us, it's, it's that contrast, that's where the visual interest is. Obviously the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style. NASA and then punk, punk which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch. A bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. Alrighty, what's the plan, Captain? That seems pretty legit. 
This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, so they said there's a thousand planets. So we got one, I'm guessing one, two, three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? I'm guessing moon, 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 moon. So this one just has six. So let's say on average, I'm guessing probably six is the average. Your top out on a solar system is probably going to be 10 planets. So I mean, if there's a thousand, I mean, that's, you're looking at a hundred, if there's ten planets, I mean, you're looking at a hundred solar systems. That's insane. ...or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren, but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you So right here, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25, 26, 26 alone, just, dude, this game is going to be, and the problem I have, it's, it's, you know, just personal to me, is when a game is too big, I get, I get burnt out, right, because I'm going to put some serious hours in this game, so I always like to play two games around, uh, two games at the same time, so, obviously, Modern Warfare 3 is going to be dropping, in November, so I'll probably go hard on this for like a month, right? Right when it comes out, I'm gonna go hard, right? Hours and hours. I'll probably take a little break, go hard again, and then when Modern Warfare 3, I'm gonna jump back and forth to kind of ease on in. Because when I did Breath of the Wild in preparing for Tears of the Kingdom, I went hard on Breath of the Wild. I mean, Every day, you know, four or five hours, and it just got burnt out. I had to put it down for a little bit, hop back on Call of Duty. So, hopefully, because there's going to be so much in this game, it's going to be so deep, so detailed. I mean, it's you know, so let's get back to it. You can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. So I wonder if you weren't cleared, if you had like maybe a bounty out or you had some like contraband, would you, would they board the ship? Would you either be like, can't enter here or, I mean, are they going to have patrol ships come? You're going to have to get into a fight. I wonder how that's going to work. As soon as you land in a city like New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think about it. Buddy, it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. Welcome Ooh. to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. 
Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. The artifact, okay. if you could place it on the table here. Oh my God, look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of characters. You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege. And Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here value law, discipline, and the legacy of humanity. They consider themselves the true children of Earth. You ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies even get your Vanguard. UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. Beyond the United Colonies reach, you might find yourself in a much more wild and independent That's coalition hilarious. of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. Let's see right there, that reminded me of is that? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Beyond the United Colonies reach, That's you might hilarious. find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. Sorry, I don't want to go about my. This is Freestar Collective Space. This, this to me is Fallout. It, it's got Fallout 4 written all over it. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Route Inn is an Aquila City fixture. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. Neon started out as a fishing platform, but is now known throughout the settled systems as a pleasure city where almost anything goes. Going to neon. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Ryujin is hiring the best and brightest of today for our future tomorrow. Everyone has been chewed up and ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore. But these areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think the galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, ready to get out there? I cannot wait. Throughout the galaxy, there are so many things to see and stories to experience. But the most important story is the one that you tell. 
I'm the type of person who spends hours in character creation, and I think people are going to be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. One of the biggest overhauls was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities. And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all of the characters and NPCs you're gonna see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. Not all of it. Hey, come on, come on. Okay. Take it easy. You were out cold. This must uh, be the beginning. No of the game. physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets, and that'll be your starting point. Your journey from there can be as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also the simplest character generation system we've ever had. We let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want, with the various facial morphs you can blend together, the dermesthetic and makeup, blemishes, scars, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot, but I think it's the most fun to use. Character creation is more than just how you look. This is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Backgrounds. Now this this one's going to be interesting. So obviously this game's going to be so big. Um, most likely most people are gonna, you know, play it through at least twice. I would say that's what I plan on doing. So. For me, Bounty Hunter and Explorer are probably the two I'm going to do. I think Explorer would be the first one. Um, I think if I do a second run through, it's either going to be sort of a, mm, if not Bounty Hunter, maybe Smuggler, kind of piratey. I'm not sure. I'll probably decide that after I do my first run through. But I mean, backgrounds, traits, and traits are going to be really interesting. You're going to have to take your time to pick those when you start. Um, obviously, you have your starting skills. You're going to have your pros and cons of each one. Um, so for me, I'm most likely going to go explore. Um, for the first rip of the of the game, so. Let's give you a bit of backstory and start you out with three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is gonna come in handy. You could be in the middle of a fancy restaurant talking to some guy and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine, I probably should stick to professionals anyway given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. By Victoria, by Victoria, by is it real? This guy is, oh, what is his name? The, um, the clown guy, not clown guy, but from Skyrim. That starts the Brotherhood quest. Um, oh, what is his name? That's that's his voice. Um, oh, I can't remember to save a life of me, but he. That's his voice. That's that's that character. I'm telling you. Really, really, you. He'll join your crew and he'll give you gifts if you're willing to put up with this constant commentary. I can't believe I get to stand near you. Breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my God. I came across some hostile zealots in space, but because I had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them, I was able to get by without any issues. 
There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. What a view! It's a feast for the eyes! Off we go! To another adventure! We'll let you discover that on your own. Yeah, that dude's annoying, I'd kill him. Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, okay. which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. All right, so let's go back there real quick. From our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, which can be. So this looks like your most likely your main hub. So it has the planet you're. I'm guessing you're on. How much you surveyed it? Time. Frontier class A two crew, sixteen light years. Oh, that must be your ship. Your level health, obviously. Um, your perk skill points and your weapon hmm. used to unlock or rank up skills ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher ranks with our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill, there's a lot to choose from. I like the Xeno Sociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. Boost pack, out of the gate. I'm boost packing everywhere. I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm happy to do that. Invest in the skills that suit your playstyle. I'm very much a stealth player, so I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. My favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie and then jumping out and springing on people. Whenever possible, I like to talk my way through situations. Is the area's off limits? Fine, I'll issue you an access card. I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing a death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. Thank you, thank you. Looks like a nice sniper right there. God, that looks gorgeous. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We study data from NASA and a multitude of other sources to help us make the world feel believable. From the way we approached planetary atmospheres to the way we placed biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, You'll be navigating asteroid fields, having chance meetings with interesting strangers, dogfighting in space, and exploring derelict ships. It's all out there. Ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity 
because whether it's on the surface of a planet, the alleys of a city, or the vastness of space, you never know what you'll find. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. Oh, so let's check. By the amount of stuff you can do. All right, so we got a ship right here. So it looks like 72,000 thousand credits for this ship I believe oh no I'm sorry the value is three six eight three hundred sixty eight thousand three hundred twenty five credits mass 1960 it's unregistered um, propulsion maybe balance shield crew reactor jump 26 light years cargo capacity haul fuel we have this. This must be gravity, shield, engine, balance. I'm not sure what that one is. Huh. It's a nice ship. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. Dude, that's... The parts you choose to build with don't... I mean, you... This is going to be so deep that even in your ship building, it's, it's almost endless. Different ships for different missions. Then you can go into detail for each part. You can build and then customize. You could probably steal ships. Man, it's going to be insane. It's going to be insane. Just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, your ship can look like almost anything you want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like animals. The HMS Platypus, <laughs> as I called it. Nice. Where it had a, like a giant tail to it. And we've done spiders, we've done mechs. So it's really whatever your Dude, imagination. What was that? Giant tail to it. And we've done that spiders. Prime? We've done mechs. To me, that's that looks like Optimus Prime, right? Am I wrong? Come on, that is that Prime. Uh, mm, yeah, I think so. So it's really whatever your imagination is. 
And while you can build your home among the stars the way you want to, you're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. These companions can serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and outposts, as well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? Uh, maybe not. You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts, and their unique skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like and give him a little personality. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using and the shipbuilding okay. tools and crew selection features in Starfield, you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, let's take to the sky. putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Spaceflight should be exciting and dangerous, and you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. Huh. We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your okay, engines will go. make your ship faster. Powering up the grab drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Where did that come from? Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Oh yeah. Once yes, you've taken sir. control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. But space is way more than fighting. So, I mean, you could just start collecting ships. I'm guessing you're going to have to disable it, right? Because, I mean, if you do too much damage, it's going to obviously explode or be unflyable. You're not going to be able to fly it. 
uh, you're probably only going to be able to loot it. So the targeting system perk is going to allow you to hit like the grab driver, the engines, right, to stop it, or their shields, you know, per se, um, and that way you can kind of, they'll be dead in the water, you board them, boom, boom, Russian party, you know, boarding party, hello. Uh oh, all right, let's see. For your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. Ooh, fancy. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them, you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Some strangers okay. might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're... That, uh, that happens to me all the time. I'm going to start, I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to start this game, right? Look at me. I'm going to start this game. I'm going to get sidetracked. And next thing you know, my side quest bar is going to be filled with, with 20 different side quests. And I haven't even gotten to what I was, what I wanted to do. And I'm going to have to go to this planet and this planet. It's going to be insane. But I'm going to do it because it's Starfield and it's Bethesda. So human we thought we were the only ones to leave earth Ooh, that dna is so present here it's in our random encounters it's in our handcrafted quests and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe there are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit we want you to feel like explorers breaking ground on new planets exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy we want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder. And sometimes, a little fear. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys, and just setting you free. Hey everybody, we were showing you so much stuff, but we thought we'd just take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And for this game, uh, we've done a watch. It is the Constellation Explorer's watch. I would rock that um, watch. This is the watch that lie. you actually get in the game that acts as part of I your HUD where it's the compass and then environmental information. It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes with, uh, Isvan. Yeah, we really took as much care and designed this case as we did case. to watch. Our attention to detail and the game. Told I will be. I'm, I'm not sure if they show it, but Xbox has a Starfield controller. And I will be playing this game on controller. Um, it's actually the first first game I'll be playing on controller on my PC. I switched over to mouse and keyboard, but for this, I'm going to be playing it so much and streaming so much. That way, I'll be able to play on my controller, set my keyboard and mouse aside for 
stream OBS, you know, um, but I will be, that weekend it comes out, I will be going to Best Buy and snagging up a Starfield controller. Also, I'm going to have to get another SSD because this game requires a 125 gig SSD. Now, this game, they say it's going to be around 125, right? With updates and DLC, this game is easily going to push over 200 gigs. So, from my thinking, especially with Modern Warfare 3 coming out, I'm probably going to get a 1 terabyte SSD and then put those two games on that 1 terabyte SSD and I should be good. <laughs> should. It, I'm 70% sure I should be good. And that's saying something because the size of this game is going to be ridiculous. 125 at the gate, updates, 1 DLC is going to be... <sighs> I mean, I don't know, what, 15, 20 gigs, maybe more? I mean, depends on how big. Uh, and, you know, they're constantly going to be adding to it, so I think a one terabyte should be good. And the prices are so good. I'll do a little video on it, probably a YouTube short when I go get it. I checked, one terabyte Samsung SSD, 49 bucks. I mean, whoa. Who gets a hard drive anymore, right? I'm going to have a YouTube short on that soon. Fully translates to this. Inspired by the cases that the astronauts used during the Apollo era to bring back samples from the moon. It's got an intricate locking mechanism. Authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of this as something that would exist in the world in the Starfield universe. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. It even tells the time. We actually have something else. Now that we're part of Xbox, we get to work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we have created this custom limited edition... There it is. I love the colorway. The layout's going to be as you're piloting the ship. It's kind of gold, red... A little bit of gray accent. It's going to be nice. Starfield controller, it's awesome. It is now, you know, our favorite controller. We love this because it's inspired by the actual controls of your spaceship. And not only that, we've created the first ever custom headset with Xbox. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. Now, I won't be getting the headset. My plan is to... I have a Samson um, Q2U, I believe, a microphone. Um, I will be getting an Elgato uh, lower boom arm um, using that. And I'm thinking about getting an um, a inner ear headset like Razer has. The oh, I don't, can't remember the name of it. But almost like pods, but they're wired. Just, you know, if I'm going to play for so long, these get heavy. These Corsairs are super nice. Um. But if I'm going to be playing for long periods of time, that's going to be... And I'll probably have my mic somewhere here, a little bit more free. Um, but I'm going to do... Once I get my streaming set up, I got a pretty good... I have to get a little bit adjusting with the lights, but I'm getting off track. Let's get back to Starfield. Starship Frontier. Ready to start on your signal. That's clean. So is the headset. The headset is pretty clean. every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? You because we want to give you freedom on a galactic dude. level. 
the freedom to experience both the exciting planets Dude, I'm gonna be love and the quiet ones. Oh my god. Scanning a planet a before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, oh, and nice. customizing. I think what is cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together a block of terrain. After that, we have the system. Did you? So it generates the planet as a player approaches? Hold on, I have to go back for a second. What? the planet itself as a procedural content but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore our Whoa. system builds the planet as the player approaches it we stitch Dang. together a block of terrain after that we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore creatures to encounter ore and plants to pick up it allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that Bethesda is known for. Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. Up so even west. if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. Auto kind of little pistol. Got Looks like a little forty five. Little melee kill. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, good. you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. And now the this, habitat mod... Now this is going to be another deep, deep dive. I mean, so you're, you're going to have your missions, obviously. You have your side missions, your different factions you can join. Shipbuilding is going to be super in-depth, exploring planets. Now you get to build outposts. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be later in the game. I'm sure you're going to need tons of resources, credits, stuff like that. But you could almost build a home base. I mean, it's going to be really, really in-depth. Modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. 
assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on foot building or you can now use a top down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier. Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources. Oh, you're going to have to you can craft armor, weapons. I mean, it's going to be so in-depth. So you're going to be able to do food, drink. Let's see. Outpost development, equipment, weaponry. I mean, it's going to be almost never-ending. <laughs> as you find or already have. Mod your weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. Different weapon sights and scopes, larger magazines, a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive rounds. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. Oh yeah. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than <laughs> I want to say any other game we've done before. There's a lot of variety. That looks like a straight old shoddy, baby. The juice dude. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around. And for giving you an edge in combat. Sometimes you'll even feel like... Dude, I'm thinking boost, boost, come down, shoddy. Pow, pow. Or, you know, platform, grenade, jump, boost, boost, shoddy. I mean, if you're inside, it's going to be... Oh, man. It's going to be so much fun. Like you're flying. Grenade launcher, maybe? Like a rifle. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns, or maybe you prefer something bigger. Starfield's got you covered. Now, I'm curious is if you're in a battle with somebody, right? Just like in the ship fighting, ship fighting. Um, I wonder if if you if you give them too much damage, right? I mean, if I go to somebody, boom, boom, with a grenade and a shotgun, right? Am I gonna be able to take their armor, or their armor is gonna be destroyed, right? And, unless I do a, what if I do a sneak attack melee? Now I've only knocked them out with my fist. Do I get to take their armor? Same thing with the ship fighting, right? If I just disable the ship, I can board it and take it. But if I blow it all to hell, I can only sav you know, 
scavenge what's left. So. A little revolver. Samurai sword. Uh oh, robot. get superpowers thanks again for being with us today we are just so grateful that you've taken the time and spent it here i know there was probably a lot to take in there's a lot to the game even more than we could show here you know as we play it we're always sharing these unique and special moments that only a game like this can bring when i think about what makes it special it really is the people here this game is a reflection of the incredible and passionate team that made it all of them putting something special of themselves into it. So let's hear some of their favorite moments. I love the way that our final combination of all the new tech has come together to create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration, every biome is different. The word that comes to mind is vast. Oh, well, I'm sure. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. Oh, I just love that. that constant feel of discovery and, wow, I can't believe that there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spend all this time building your ship and you see it on the landing pad. These things are gigantic. It's the kind of thing that you just can't get anywhere else. There's something about seeing a tower over in the distance and going, I know the gravity's low here. I think I can make that jump. My <laughs> favorite part is biomes, oh, yeah. spaceships, audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy, exploration, freedom, the ending. Vesco, obviously. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount of worlds we created. Sniper rifles, come on. Lever action, rocket launcher, brain sprout. Ooh, yeah. Lever I love it. Rocket Some people might find creepy. I don't know. I know that's right, Ben. The thing that I enjoy most about the game is the freedom to be who you want to be, do what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title, but on a much bigger scale. On behalf of all of us, we can't wait for you to play Starfield and make your own special moments. That is going to be one hell of a game. So 10 days out. That's right, people. 10 days out. Oh, man. So, I'm going to chop this up, post it on YouTube. Thank you all so much, man. My YouTube shorts have been going off crazy. TikTok. I'm still getting in the swing of things. Um, but we're 10 days away. So, in that time, i gotta get still got to get a few more things. I'm going to post a couple more videos. And then we're going to start live streaming uh, Starfield. So, and we're going to take our time with this. We're not, uh, I'm not going to rush. We're going to do a deep dive into character development, character creation. We're going to plan out and we're just going to, we're going to get our money's worth of this thing. I'm telling you that right now. So, all right. It's your boy Taco Cat. Peace out. See you in the next one.
if I can find the start record button. Peace.